Hello everyone, Akafasu here with the beginner's guide to Monster Hunter Rise. Let's start! You can choose between the two types and then customize and name your character. When creating your character, be mindful as there are only a few features that you can change afterwards. Simply go to the item box and select the parent settings to change your character's hairstyle, eyebrows, facial hair, makeup and clothing. You cannot change their voice. Though I am not 100% sure about changing it once you do get yourself a DLC voice. If you do know the answer, please do mention it in the comments below. You will not be able to change your character's name even if you do use a character edit voucher which basically allows you to do a complete character makeover. While creating your Palamute, it is all cosmetic so you don't have to worry about a thing. But there's something that I'd like to tell you about your Palico, especially when you choose its support type. There are five support types, Healer, Assist, Fighter, Bombardier and Gatherer. Each of these support types are unique and depending upon what you choose, your Palico will work very differently in the game. But if you have already selected a support type, there's no need to fret. You can always get new Palicos with different support skills from the Buddy Plaza. The game also provides you with various downloadable buddies. More on this in a bit. There are three types of quests in Monster Hunter Rise. Village, Hub and Arena quests. For Village quests, you will need to speak with Hanoa and with Minoto for the Hub quests at their respective quest counters. The Village quests are single player whereas the Hub quests allow you to play with up to four players online. Here's the, quest list. the Village quests are easier than the Hub quests, so I recommend you to take on the Village quests to learn how the game works gather items in the field and learn how to take on the monsters. You will be able to increase your hunter rank when completing urgent quests. You start off with low rank quests and once you reach HR4 you can then take on higher rank hub quests without the need of completing the low rank hub quests. You can also choose to skip the village quests and take them on at a later time. However there are some rewards that you can only get by completing village quests, such as getting new dongos for the canteen. Before going on a hunt, make sure to offer any five of the optional subquests from this menu. Completing these will reward you with research points, armor spears and some really useful items. Make sure to check them out after every successful hunt. For arena quests, you will have to speak with Master Utsushi in the gathering hub. These quests pit you against different monsters with a specific set of weapons, armor and items. Completing the arena quests will sometimes reward you with different coins that can be used to unlock new stuff at the smithy. Other than these main quests, you can also take on additional side quests from the various village denizens. Check around the village to see a speech bubble in between your hunts and then go and speak with the concerned to trigger their quests. Completing them will grant you with unique rewards and at times they might just give you free items. Hey. Uh -huh. Good luck. Before you embark on a hunt, make sure to drop by the canteen and eat up. This will not just give you an extra 50 health and stamina but also some really nice buffs. These buffs depend on what dongos you eat. You may unlock more dongos by completing various quests and gathering special items out in the field. When playing in an online lobby, dongos unlocked by other players will also show up in your canteen. I recommend eating for buffs as per your weapon type. For example, if you want to do this, eating for slugger and bombardier will stun the monster and increase your sticky damage. Other helpful dongos are like this moxie, which will save you from a fatal blow if your health is more than this indicator. Next is the Motley Mix. You may have wondered what exactly is it? Well, let me explain. This is basically a trade-off. You give certain items to the canteen and in return receive new items. Just a moment. For example, 
giving some raw meat will get you well done steak. And for every 5 items that you spend on the Motley Mix, Yomogi the chef will give you Dango tickets, which increase the activation chance of your skills by 40%, thereby increasing the chance of the skills that you're looking for. Well, don't ask me why it's called the mailman. Uh, it should definitely be called the mail cat. Ah, M A I L cat, not the mail cat. Anyways, think of this palico as your online and DLC cat. You can create online lobbies here or join other players' lobbies. You can also play with your friends in each other's lobby. Selecting add on content will allow you to download all of the event quests and any other downloadable content, whether it's free or paid. The quests will become available at the hub quest counter, whereas the items will be sent to your item box. Which reminds me, if you have armor less than rarity 3 equipped right now, please equip the guild cross armor that you get for free and then farm your way to better armor. Shops are where hunters come to buy and sell stuff. If you have amiibos, you can select this option here. Sometimes the shop will also offer you a lottery, where you can pay with money or a lottery ticket and get different goodies. During this time, the shop will also go on sale, meaning everything will be offered at half the price. And this is the time that I recommend you to go shopping, especially if you're looking to buy a lot of stuff. Later on in the game, you will unlock the melding pot, which will allow you to craft talismans. These are powerful accessories that have special skills and slots for decorations. I found that the top three aren't really all that good. It's the Wisp of Mystery and Rebirth that give you the really good talismans. Oh, and uh, yeah, they are all random, which means that I would uh, really recommend you to craft them as much as you possibly can in order to get the really good ones. There are two types of smithies, one for yourself and one for your buddies. Here you can craft and upgrade your armor and weapons provided you have the money and the crafting materials which you acquire by taking down large and small monsters. Certain items can only be acquired through the Mousineries and Argosy. You can also craft layered armor and change the appearance of your hunter. Same applies for your buddies at the Buddy Smithy. To craft their armor and weapons, you will need scraps, which can be traded for different items. Also, by visiting the item box and choosing Manage Equipment, Equipment Display, you can change your armor display settings. Wirebugs are a completely new feature to this game. Not only do they allow you to traverse large areas, but they also have very specific weapon moves. You can learn about these moves in the hunter's notes and practice them in the training area. Upon using them, they can take some time to recharge before becoming usable again. By default, you carry two and can carry another one if you happen to find one in the field. But this third one is temporary and is only available at your disposal for a limited time. When hunting for monsters in different areas, you'll notice these flowers called jewel lilies. They require great wire bugs. No, not the wire bugs that you have. Great wire bugs. By placing the great wire bugs in the jewel lilies, you can then reach otherwise inaccessible areas and traverse huge distances. Yeah. 
you will have to speak with this guy and he'll give you some to begin with. And he'll give you more if you complete his side quests. At the Buddy Plaza, you will get to meet Ayori, the Buddy Handler. Here you can hire new buddies with different moves and skills, scout for something specific that you like, and download any special buddies. These buddies came here just to help us out. You can also rename your buddies, yes, even the ones you created, but not the special downloadable ones. At the buddy board, you can assign two buddies you want to take along on a hunt. You can take two buddies with you if you're playing solo or just one buddy, which is buddy number one, selected on the buddy board. This means that you can take two cats or two dogs with you at any given time. I would recommend to take one of each type with you because both of them have different properties and they act very differently in hunts. For example, your Palamut allows you to travel really fast when you ride it and your palicos will also loot for extra items. Buddy skills allows you to assign various skills to your buddies. More can be equipped as you level them up. Your palamutes can also equip special gear which is apart from the weapon and armor that you equip them with. Behavior allows you to change your buddy's behavior. Through the buddy expert, you can train your buddies in the buddy dojo. A total of six can be trained at any given time. Use a lagging apple to avoid using research points and maximize the experience. Through the meow sceneries, you can send off your buddies to scout different locations and bring back various items, some of which cannot be acquired elsewhere. Don't ask me why it is called that even though you can send your dogs, I have no idea. Maybe because it's run by a cat? There is also this big tree which you can climb and search the Kohut nest for a maximum of 5 random items. I recommend coming here every time your Meow Sceneries return. Through Rodin the Trader, you can send off your buddies on trade requests. This works like the farm in Monster Hunter World. You can choose which specific item you need and your buddies will get them for you while also occasionally finding some other rare stuff. You start with one submarine but can unlock two more by completing these quests. Buddy bargaining provides you with some special results at the cost of research points. More bargains open up as you level up your buddies. Which reminds me, sending your buddies off on the Argosy or Meow Sceneries will not level them up, so make sure to use the dojo for any buddies you are not taking along for your hunts. Through Argosy, you can also trade research points for various goods, special goods and rare finds some of which can give you a nifty amount of zenny. Taking this dinghy from the buddy plaza will take you to the training area. Here you can try out the 14 different weapons and practice using the wire bugs and switch skills.
You can also change some of the settings of the practice dummy. Use the item box to equip different armor, weapons and even layered armor. To make things easier you can save loadouts and equip them when needed. You can save your loadouts separately for your weapons and armor, layered armor and items. You can also change your switch skills here and see what suits your playstyle the most. Through your housekeeper you can customize the interior of your room with various decorations and even the pictures that you took using your camera. You can also change the BGM for various areas of the village here. The Meow Sceneries, Argozy and Buddy Dojo can also be accessed from your housekeeper. Gallery allows you to watch various cutscenes and intros that you have already watched through game progression. The housekeeper is also available in the gathering hub. This is your go-to guide for learning about your weapons, the monsters and endemic life. I've already talked about the weapons so let's talk about the monsters. Here you can see which weapon and element type the monster is weak against. The higher the number, the weaker the monster is to that type. This page shows you how you can get different monster materials along with what are the chances of acquiring said materials. Sometimes you'll have to slay the monster and at times capture it if you're looking for something in particular. Here you can also find information about endemic life. Well, that's it for now. I hope you found all of this or at least some of this information really helpful and that I've been able to explain the various systems and elements of the game. Thank you for all the support, for all the views, for all the likes. It means a lot. I'll be posting some new content real soon. So until next time, happy hunting. <laughs>